Hello, my name is Jisuo from Han Mom Church in Chuncheon. I really hated my dad when he became a different person after our family lost all our money. Then I met the risen Jesus, and I came to love my dad and share the gospel with other people with love. I'd like to share my testimony with you. I really loved my dad when I was a little girl. He was always on my side. Whenever I wanted to play airplane, he would lie down right away and lift me up in the air. When I said, up, he'd fly me higher. And when I said, down, he'd fly me lower. He was like a big, dependable bear to me. Not a scary bear, but someone I could always rely on and keep me safe. My dad always made the time to vacation with his family. Every time, he would take a camera and tripod along to take family pictures. I loved and respected him so much because I knew how hard he worked, but he was always taking care of us like this. If someone asked me, who do you like better, your mom or your dad? I answered immediately, without hesitation, my dad. That's how much I liked my dad. I was really happy until I was about eight years old. One day, I came home, and everything in the house had a red sticker on it. I tried to take one off, but my mom frowned at me and told me not to touch it. I thought, what's going on? Did I do something wrong? So I looked at my dad, and he had a serious look on his face. I realized that something was wrong. My parents had had a debt, and as it grew bigger and bigger, our belongings had eventually been taken away from us as well. After that, our family had a very hard time. What was harder for me than our family's money problems was how my dad changed. My dad used to be so devoted to his family, but now he drank almost every day and fought with my mom because of money. Every time they fought, there was talk of divorce. It was a huge shock to me to see my father change like that because of money. I became nervous and worried all the time that my parents might fight again. I had stomach aches three or four times a day, every day, because I was so stressed and anxious about it. In order to earn money, my dad had to work out of town. He came back home only once a week. My dad was concerned about my brothers and my educations. So while he was away, he gave us homework. Each week, we had to read a book and write a report about it. And he told us that if we didn't write the report, he would spank us for sure. I didn't believe him. I thought, dad won't spank us. And I didn't do my homework. Contrary to my expectations, my dad spanked me just as he had promised. That day, I got spanked till my bottom was so bruised that I couldn't sit down. What scared me more than the spanking was the light in my dad's eyes. I didn't see any love in them. They just looked full of hate. That was when I started to avoid my dad and close my heart off to him. Also, I got nervous whenever my dad came home. When I was in middle school, my parents opened a restaurant with my uncle's help. The restaurant was a huge success, so we made a lot of money. We repaid all our debt, and our money problems went away. The restaurant did so well that we became rich, and we began to live like wealthy people did. I used to sometimes think that the reason we became unhappy was because we lost money, and that if we had money, we would be happy again. But that didn't happen at all. My dad left all the work at the restaurant to my mom, and all he did was invite his friends over to the restaurant and drink with them every day. My mom was the only one who ever worked at the busy restaurant. I was so angry at my dad's irresponsible behavior. When there were lots of customers, my dad would get irritated. Even when the restaurant got extremely busy, he would ignore it and just sit and watch, drinking and laughing. I couldn't understand his actions. I couldn't even believe that this was my dad. My mom had a really hard time with my dad's irresponsible behavior, too. One day, my mother told him, How can you only care about yourself? Then my father yelled at her and told her to shut up. My mother hadn't done anything wrong. She was having a hard time because of my dad's irresponsible actions. So I couldn't understand why my dad got so angry. Every time my mom told me 
I'm having such a hard time, Jisoo. I hated my dad to death for being so irresponsible, selfish, and uncaring. One day, I was so angry that I texted my dad to tell him, You don't deserve to be a dad. I don't ever want to marry a man like you. You are so selfish. How can you care about no one but yourself? Don't you even see what mom's going through? My text message must have been a shock to him because my dad didn't come home for two months after that. Rather than being concerned about him, though, I hoped that he would never come back home. I even changed the security code to our front door. When my father came back home two months later, I didn't even say hello. I completely ignored him. The relationship between my dad and me was at its worst. Then, to make things even worse, the restaurant stopped doing well, and we had to close it. Not only that, I completely messed up my college entrance exam. I wanted to die. It was so, so hard to cope with. My dad drank and smoked every day. On the other hand, my mom said that we had to kneel before God, and she went to early morning prayer service every day. Nine months of morning prayer service later, my mom began to say to me, Jesus rose from the dead. We have to believe in Jesus as our Lord. Nothing about our circumstances had changed, but my mom was acting like all of her problems were gone. It was pretty amazing. My mom suggested a testimonial program for me to watch. Every person on that program joyfully gave their testimony about how they were changed by the gospel. I was so fascinated that I watched the testimonial program all day long. As I watched these testimonies, I wanted to be changed like they were. So, I asked my mom's permission to live in the Hamam Church dormitories. At the dorms, I had a conversation with my leader. She said that Jesus was a historical figure and that the timeline was divided into B.C. and A.D. because of him. I thought Jesus was a made-up character in the Bible, so I was fascinated to hear that he had really existed. Then my leader talked about Jesus' resurrection. She said that Jesus' resurrection was a historical fact, written into historical records just like any other important event in history. But I had doubts about whether the resurrection had really happened. How can a man come back to life? It seemed too unrealistic and too impossible. Even if they said it was a historical event, I couldn't believe that it had happened unless I actually saw it with my own eyes. As I read the Bible, I found a man who was just like me. His name was Thomas. When the disciples who had seen the risen Jesus went to Thomas and said, Jesus is alive. We saw the risen Jesus. Jesus really came back to life. Thomas replied, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nail marks were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. I felt exactly like Thomas did. The more time passed, the more frustrated I felt at God. God, if I had seen Jesus raised back to life myself 2,000 years ago, of course I would believe. But I didn't see him myself. How can a dead person be raised back to life? Then, one day, I saw a video about how the disciples of Jesus were martyred. The disciples were martyred in ways so much worse than I'd ever imagined. I thought they had been killed quickly and painlessly, but every single one of them had suffered horribly cruel and painful death. They had endured unspeakable, agonizing torture. And they had died at the end of all of that. But the most shocking thing of all was that Thomas was among those martyrs. Thomas had said that he wouldn't believe unless he'd touched the risen Jesus himself. Then how could he have become a martyr? 
At that moment, I realized Thomas met the risen Jesus himself. Jesus really did rise from the dead. The doubts about Jesus' resurrection were gone, and his resurrection became real to me. As the resurrection of Jesus became real to me, I understood why the disciples had lived the way they had. The disciples could all become martyrs because they had realized exactly who the risen Jesus was. The Jesus who had died on the cross was God because he rose again. They had gone to heaven as they cried out, Jesus rose again. He is our God, our creator. For them, death was the best moment of their lives, the moment they went to heaven. As I came to stand before the risen Jesus, I realized just how wicked I had been. I had ignored Jesus and mocked him as I yelled at God, The resurrection is not real. How can I believe the resurrection of Jesus when I haven't seen or touched him myself? The fact that the almighty Jesus had come and gone from this world couldn't be erased just because there was a 2,000-year time gap. My true Lord, Jesus, had come and gone from this world. He had come and gone from this world for me. Someone who couldn't help but go to hell before being my own Lord. Repentance poured out of me from the very core of my heart. I had to bend on my knees. God, I didn't believe in Jesus and I lived as my own master. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Now I accept the risen Jesus as my Lord into my heart. With an earnest heart, I repented and received Jesus as the Lord of my heart. Then, one day, I watched as a church member gave her testimony. She confessed with joy that she was disabled just the same before and after she believed in Jesus. But that didn't matter because, through Jesus' resurrection, everything old had passed and she had become a new creation. She was different from me. I had been looking at my dad, who wasn't changing, and I had been looking at myself, who wasn't developing a love for him in my heart. But God let me know that I had already become someone who loves my dad because my Lord is Jesus. This was so true through Jesus' resurrection. My old self, who couldn't love my dad, was dead with Jesus. And I was a new creation who loved my dad. This was because the risen Jesus was my Lord. I was already someone who loved my dad. This is how I came to love my dad. My love for my dad didn't just end as a confession. It became a reality in my life. While training in the church dorms, I had the chance to go back home. My dad was still spending his day drinking and smoking. As I watched him, rather than being angry, I thought about how my dad was a lost soul that Jesus wanted to find, and this made my heart ache so much. All I could think about was wanting to be nice to my dad and wanting him to believe in Jesus and be happy. So I shared the gospel with him with all of my heart. I said, Dad, Jesus is risen. He is our Lord. So you have to believe in him as your Lord in your heart. Dad, let's go to heaven together. Maybe my dad saw my heart because he replied, okay. Also, I couldn't understand how hard it must have been for him trying to take care of our family through the difficult times we had. My heart ached for him and I felt badly for him. I am praying for my dad to meet Jesus as soon as he can, so that we can become an eternal family and he can live a full life of happiness. Amen. 
In the past, our family worried about what to eat, drink, and wear every day, so we lived a really hard life. But after my mom and I came to believe in the risen Jesus as our Lord, we don't worry about our livelihood anymore, and we live joyfully as we hope for eternal things in Jesus together. My mom and I have fellowship with God's Word, and we've become reliable co-workers in Christ to each other. My mom asks me to pray when she's going somewhere to share the gospel, and I earnestly pray for her and the souls she meets. My mom says that she's really thankful to God that we can live for Jesus together. I often share the gospel on the streets. One day, I shared the gospel with a lady who was walking by. When I shared the gospel with her, she glared at me, and then she stopped walking and said, Stop! Stop following me! in an angry voice. But then, my heart became filled with mercy and pity for this soul. So I said to her, Okay, I will. But Jesus really did rise from the dead. He is your Lord. Then, I prayed with all my heart, God, although she couldn't hear the gospel from me, please let her come to believe in the risen Jesus through someone else. Because I came to live such a joyful and free life by hearing the gospel through someone's lips, I came to realize just how precious a work it is to share the gospel with others. So, sharing the gospel is my first priority in my life. Before I met the risen Jesus, I couldn't love anyone, even my dad. Then I met the risen Jesus, and now I've become someone who gives the gospel of Jesus' resurrection to everyone with love. God. I am so thankful that you gave me life and the most joyful mission in the world, sharing the gospel of the resurrection. I love you so much. The risen Jesus is my Lord and my God. Thank you.